Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we don't have any good contracts here. So we're just gonna go ahead and try to do one of these. Probably science, da science data from Surface of Gilly. Now we do have a fair amount of science from our rovers so we're gonna go ahead and grab something. High power electrics? I mean we don't really need it too too bad. Scanning tech wouldn't be awful. having a survey scanner and this would be our last science experiment I think our last anyway there might be a couple more yeah negative gravioli detectors but okay let's go ahead and do that and now we're gonna leave that and we are going to send a Kerbal to Gilly so first things first we are going to go ahead and open up our Snedgus Mark V lander. Now, this guy is pretty out of date, I'm noticing. Like, extremely out of date. First things first, we're going to ditch these fuel tanks. And we are going to get the standard fuel tanks at this point. Fuel tanks. It helps if I go to the right menu. Fuel tanks. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do this right here. Hey, it's not on symmetry mode. Fantastic. We're going to go ahead and do this right here, like so. We're going to grab another one, stick it up there, and then we'll grab aerodynamic nose cones. Essentially, we're just recreating our super heavy launcher, or our super heavy lifter. And then we're going to throw on a mainsail. Not a skipper, a mainsail. There we go, on each of those. Fantastic. Now as far as this up here goes, we're going to be making a fair number of modifications here. So we're going to ditch the, the Rockamax X232, and we're going to replace that with a Jumbo 64. And then we're going to put on a nuclear engine, like with our, uh, like with our other probes that we've sent into interstellar. We're going to drop the oxidizer out of here because we don't need oxidizer for a nuclear engine. There we go. We do need to move this thing up. Now, as far as the actual lander can itself goes, I think we're going to redesign the lander basically in its entirety. But first, let's go ahead and grab some structural components here. So we'll grab a strut and we'll just link these together so that we don't have too, too much waggling. And we're probably going to go ahead and take this from bicoupled up to quad coupled since we're going interplanetary. Something along the lines of that. Ish. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and ditch all of this for now. This is the booster that we're going to be using. However, we do need to rework our actual lander a bit. So first things first, we're going to remove the oxidizer from these tanks. And I want to just check if we are at uh, Gilly, what our thrust to weight would look like if we ditched this has a decoupler here, yeah. If we ditched that engine and instead were to use a nuclear engine. Now, we would have to redesign our landing legs because this thing is tall. But it's also heavy, is the thing. So we're going to use these same external fuel ducts coming in just straight like this. Holy crap, this thrust to weight ratio is insane. <laughs> that, uh... That is more than enough to the point where we could probably get away with removing these T400s and sticking on T800s, something along the lines of this. And then we'd want to refuel duct these. Now, of course, we do not need oxidizer in them, so we ditch the oxidizer. 
Look at that, still 85 thrust to weight ratio on Gilly. That is insane. Okay, we are going to put a couple of struts on for sure. We're gonna strut up from here to here, as well as from here to here, just to make sure we have as little waggling as possible. We're gonna put a decoupler on here. Standard, standard business. We want, we want some nose cones on here, but we don't wanna carry them the whole way. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And this is essentially the lander that we're going to be bringing, although I wanna take these photovoltaic panels off of here and stick them on the Science Junior. And speaking of the Science Junior, there is one more modification that I would like to make here. So let's pull out the engine and let's pull off the fuel tanks and let's stick the mech jib up on this guy, although we don't need it quad coupled. So let's go ahead and stick the mech jib right here and pull off this. So all we have right now is our lander can. But I'd like to switch us over to a bigger lander can. So rather than using the Mark 1, I, I would like to use, for example, mm, let's see here, what do we want? The Mark 2 lander can? How many does this seat? This seat's two. That's okay. Now this thing is bigger, and there's no doubt about that. Do we want to bring two? I think we want to bring two. Do we have anything that really seats three? I mean, we've got this command pod that seats three, but it is significantly larger than the Mark II, isn't it? Uh, there we go. No, it's the same size, but I think it, it weighs significantly more. Do we care about that? Ultimately, 2.72 tons versus 2.66 tons. I don't think we care about that. So let's ditch that and we're going to bring in the Mark 1 3 command pod. So that's this guy right here. Okay. Now we are going to need to stick on our rocket motor and then take it back off again and take off this decoupler and this heat shield because we need to put ourselves on a much, much better heat shield. Instead of a 1.25 meter, we will be needing a 2.5 meter. Yeah, we'll be needing a 2.5 meter heat shield. So we're going to do that, and we're also going to put on a, where is it, coupling. We want a 2.5 meter decoupler, which is this guy. Now that is a significant amount of weight, don't get me wrong. But that will be beneficial in the long run. So we want to do that, and we also want to stick all of these on here. Now, to land this, we're probably going to need an additional pair of parachutes. So we're going to go ahead and stick on here a couple of radial mount parachutes. Probably right around here or so. Or up here. I think down here maybe. No, I, I like it up top. However, maybe like here. Yeah, that'll work couple of radial mount parachutes there. We could even quad mount them. They're cheap. Let's just be safe. I don't think those are blocking the hatch. We'll need to check that. But I don't believe they're blocking the hatch. So, obviously this thing slopes in, which is going to make things a little interesting here. So we're going to go ahead and grab the radial decouplers here. We do want to quad mount this, but as you can see, that makes it kind of interesting because it's sloping inward. This thing is not designed to be a lander, so it's fine. I mean, we're just going to place them right here, and then we're going to just go ahead and use the rotate tool to rotate this to be... That's not particularly straight. Let's turn off the snapping. Okay, uh, that's still not straight. But we were able to get a lot closer. Something kind of along the lines of that. 
That looks roughly straight. Okay. Now, let's see here. I don't believe our fuel lines are actually connecting. So, also these struts didn't connect. So let's go ahead and place our struts like this. Make sure our fuel lines are actually connected in with the engine. Okay, why is it still telling us we have no thrust to weight here? Uh, that's because of decoupling issues. Okay, there we go. So we're running 66 thrust to weight ratio. This will be plenty. Like, this is, this is a stupid amount of fuel for a lander like this. So then the other thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have good legs on here. So as far as our legs go, this thing is pretty heavy, as is. This lander is a weight of 18 tons. So we're going to need something pretty heavy, heavy duty. Um, let's see. Looks like these aren't actually weighted, so that's fine. We're going to use the biggest legs we can regardless. And the question is, is that enough clearance? I'm going to go with no. So we can get more clearance either with struts or with more fuel. This thing has a reaction wheel, right? Yeah, that has a reaction wheel. Does it also have monopropellant? It does. We'll ditch the monopropellant and have a little bit more thrust to weight. So if we do that, then we can put on like a pair of T4 or a T400 and get a little bit more reach here. Ditch the oxidizers. There we go. Now our thrust to weight is lower, but our delta V went up a fair amount. And then just drop on some legs, and now we have a lot more space. This thing is pretty top heavy, though which is potentially going to be a problem if we land on an unlevel surface, which this is Gilly we're talking about. This is basically nothing but unlevel surfaces. This is a big ol' lander, though. We're going to go ahead and get rid of these landing struts here. And we will also need a decoupler right here. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and save this as a Snedgus Mark V lander. We'll overwrite, that's fine. We're not going to be using that other landing design anytime soon, most likely. I just want to fix this a little bit. There we go. That was bothering me. So yeah, I just... I'm not entirely certain that this thing is going to be particularly stable. I kind of want to find out. I'm afraid that we're going to lose this. We should also probably have our body be properly selected for Gilly. There we go. Okay, so now we need to make sure that our decouplers are properly set up. And I can tell you for a fact, they aren't. So we're going to go ahead and keep these in the last stage. This decoupler here should be more like here with these decouplers. If we drop our engine, we may as well drop our fuel tanks as well. And then this here should be at least with our engine. Realistically, getting rid of our nose cones should be substantially before, at least here. But we can combine all of this together like that. And then we can do something along the lines of that. However, let's drop the 18 adapter and put on a 12 decoupler, since we've got the adapter there. That has a pretty significant amount of Z-fighting. That's awkward. I don't think it's going to cause any issues, though. OK, let's go ahead and save this as is. And then we're going to detach at the decoupler and launch without saving. So that way we don't lose the lander, or lose the, the launch vehicle. But we do have the lander still, and we can run a few tests. So the first thing I want to test 
and I feel no compunction to not revert any of these tests. The first thing I want to test is if we can tip this thing relatively easy here. And the answer appears to be no. We appear to be pretty stable. I mean, our our weight is like here-ish, I think, so that's not too, too bad. Obviously, we're not going to have the thrust to weight to take off here. That's just never going to happen. We did shoot up our nose cones there, and they're coming back and bombing things. Okay, that was a little awkward, <laughs> but we're fine. Okay, um, the other thing I wanted to make sure of, if we EVA, okay, it's not blocked. We can actually EVA report and surface sample, apparently. And let's just recover it then, if we're going to grab ourselves some, some free science. It won't be much. But it will be a small amount, so that'll be nice. Ah uh, yeah, 2.3 science. Truly glorious. Okay, so that was overall a very successful test. I discovered quite a few interesting things there, that is to say, about the stability of this thing. And as expected, we did in fact lose the launch vehicle, but that's why we saved it without actually... or we launched it without actually saving it. So we can grab the Snedgus Mark V lander right here. Load. Okay, now the only other thing that I want to make sure of here is that inside of this guy, this service bay here, I want to make absolutely sure that we have all of our science experiments. We'll stick a surface scanning module in there. It's going to be a little awkwardly positioned, to be sure. But it looks like it's not clipping through the door. We're going to put in... We're not going to put in an in infrared telescope. That's not going to happen. Uh, we are going to be putting in... We have a barometer. We have mystery goo. We're not going to use a mobile processing lab. We're not going to use a survey scanner for now. We have a storage unit, we have a computer flight unit. Do we have a seismic accelerometer? I don't think we do. So I'm going to toss one of those in. Do we have an at atmospheric fluid spectrovariometer? I don't think we have... Wow, that's big. I don't think we have one of those. In fact, I know we don't have one of those because it's really, really big. Just put it in like that, right over top of everything else. What could go wrong? <laughs> that's what we have X-Science for. We don't need to transmit any of these, so it should be fine. We're going to start our legs retracted, like so. And I do want to move our strut connectors to be more down here, for sure. Although that did not quad couple. There we go. Okay. So something along the lines of this is what we're going to be landing on Gilly. Can we get there? Yes. Can we get back? Maybe, <laughs> is the answer. Let's see, we already removed all the oxidizer from those. As far as any additional thrust to weight goes, um, or rather any additional fuel goes, I'm not sure that we actually need need it let's see those are decoupling at awkward times we need to make sure our decouplers are correct before we start evaluating delta v so these are firing at the same time as the center engine like so and then the tanks detach and then we need what is in here there's a poodle there Okay, so we're going to go ahead and ditch the poodle. <laughs> there we go. Along the lines of that. That'll help. Okay, so then we can ditch that stage for now. Once those go, this will fire when this decouples. And then this decoupler is that guy. Which will, de which will happen when this engine fires. These going off should happen at least back in stage five. Okay, let's check this from the top down. Also, this thing's going to cost us like 200k. 
to launch, which is a little expensive, but it's fine. It'll be fine. Okay, so this is our final parachutes. We have five of them. These are our drogue chutes to slow us down a bit on the way through the Atmo. That gets rid of our fuel tanks and our engine. We have a heat shield underneath there. This detaches this stage and fires our engine. That's good. And then this detaches the nose cones as well as our primary stage goes into our second stage and fires that engine. That's good. Stage five merely detaches these. Okay, I think we're correct. So let's go ahead and save this. Now, as far as our Delta V goes, we are looking at a total Delta V of about 12,000. Theoretically, this should get us there, but I am slightly concerned. I want to just add an additional X232 here, like we have in the other. And we're going to drop the oxidizer out of there, to be sure. That gives us about an extra thousand delta V. I feel much better about that now. And then I kind of want these tail fins to be out here on these outer stages. So that way we're not carrying the weight through space. Okay. So let's see if this thing will get into orbit. That's the next step. If it gets into orbit, we're off to Gilly. Although... Before we do that, we should probably, probably figure out who's actually going on this machine. Well, we can bring three things, or three Kerbals, so let's go ahead and revert this back to the vehicle assembly, because I'm an idiot, and hit the button before I realized that we hadn't done that yet. So, we could bring, we have no real reason to bring an engineer, so we're not going to bring Bill. We only need one scientist, so I think we're going to bring Valentina and Jeb both. And then we'll bring Bob, since he needs the XP the most in terms of our scientists. Okay. We are n I hit the leave button. <laughs> Good thing I also hit the save button. Okay. So, we are now ready to launch this thing. In the general direction of Gilly. Theoretically, I hope. Landing on Gilly is, with something this tall is going to be awkward, but hopefully we have a wide enough stance that it'll be fine. But let's see how it goes. We at least want to get this guy into orbit first, though. That's step one. Once we get into orbit, then we can guaranteed get to Gilly. And then the question is, can we land... Well, we can go ahead and do an atmospheric analysis right now, apparently. Oh, we can't do it while stowed. Gotcha. Okay, so we need to open up the service bay. Atmospheric analysis. Okay, we got that. Can we collect it out of there? Is that a rerunnable experiment? Yes. I think. Maybe. Bob, why don't you EVA? I want you to go check. Okay, so you're right here. Surface scanning module. Yes. Excellent. Okay, go ahead and close the service bay and hop on. And we're going to just quick save. I have no idea what's going to happen here. But off we go. Okay, not bad thrust to wait. We do have some kind of wacky numbers here, but that's fine. We don't need surface or vessel, so we're going to use orbital for flight engineer. Excellent. Okay. So we are off. This is a very, very heavy lifter. Like, an extremely heavy lifter. But so far, we're not doing too much for waggling. So that's really great. We are tipping maybe a little fast. Yeah, we're losing control of our pitch. Or rather, our yaw authority. Okay. So why are we losing control of our yaw authority? Well, 
Let's check our vehicle assembly, shall we? For one thing, all we have as far as reaction wheel goes is this up here. So we're relying on our engine gimbling and on these tail fins quite heavily. Now all of these engines do gimbal, which is nice. But let's take a quick look at our center of mass. See, it's way down here. So what I'm thinking is we just stick in a big ol' reaction wheel down here or something. I mean, it's not a super big reaction wheel, but something like that. It's a little awkward. But let's see if that cleans that particular roll up. I don't know if it will or not, but we'll see. I want to get this guy into orbit, though, for sure. <laughs> because I want to land on Gilly next episode. That's kind of the goal here. And hopefully get home, too. Although, that might not happen next episode. Okay, let's see how this goes. We didn't run the atmospheric analysis. We'll go ahead and run that. Ah, that's a chute. We don't want the chute. Collect that. Close the service bay. Excellent. Okay, so we're not pitching over too, too fast yet. Oh, we are losing control. See, it's, it's trying to hold it back. Oh, it might be succeeding. I think it's succeeding for now. Now I think it's losing control. Yep, it is losing control. And we go a-tumbling. And the question becomes, why exactly are we doing that? Well, it's because we're so tall. That, that's the core problem. We're too tall and our ascent profile is too aggressive. So let's revert back to the launch once more. I really want to get this thing into orbit. So we could do a stock style gravity turn TM and see what happens with that. We could try that ascent profile, see if that works any better. We do want to run the atmospheric analysis once more. And then we want to collect the data and close the service bay. So let's see how the stock style gravity turn goes. I'm not sure which is more aggressive. But we clearly need a bit shallower of a gravity turn while we're in this stage. Because yeah, this gravity turn is also quite aggressive. In fact, maybe even more aggressive. But that might be fine too. If we just get super aggressive with it. Well, so far so good. This seems to be doing a gravity turn more similar to how I do it. Our apoapsis is not going up super fast like this, but our horizontal speed is, which is what really ultimately matters. Hang on, are these not asparagus? They're not asparagus. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to asparagus them, and then next episode, we'll launch this. See you all then.